Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ari with Earthshops Pain and Body. Hopefully, everybody had a chance to review our video yesterday, which I've explained a lot about our company and what we're doing. Uh, just a recap on yesterday's conversation. We also do own SNAP, Southern Nevada Automotive Pain and Body Supplies, which is directly across the street from us. And hopefully, you watched our video and you follow us. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the link below um, for Snap Southern Nevada Automotive Paint, which we have a 3,500 square foot uh, showroom with various automotive supplies that if you need. Uh, our purpose of doing these videos, which we're going to continue doing the videos, is not so much to promote our business or our paint and supply business or our collision center is to inform a lot of do-it-yourself people and to inform a lot of people out there, a lot of painters. I'm hoping we're going to help a lot of painters. As I've mentioned in my video yesterday, um, when, I, when I became a member of Earthshot Paint and Body about 15 years ago, as everybody knows, Earthshot Paint and Body has been established for over 72 years now. Uh, they started in the 1940s, way before I was born. However, in 1991, unfortunately, Urshat passed away, and the franchise are individually owned, or individual owns several of them. With that being said, we've changed our complete standard operating procedure as far as painting vehicles concerned. Uh, and I only say that so that our viewers can familiarize themselves with the procedures, uh, if I can help painters throughout the United States or the world to do their job better, faster, more proficient, with the less amount of uh, stress and using less material, I believe that I have done my job. I myself, when I became a, a team member of Earthshot Paint and Body over 15 years ago, they were using single stage paint, they were in following procedures and problems after problems occurred. Uh, throughout the years, as you know, in everything in life, you learn from your problems and you uh, execute on your mistakes and make them better and redo and, and try to correct your mistakes. And that's the same thing goes for painting vehicles. Uh, I can honestly say this, and I mentioned that in my previous video. In the last 10 years that I've been painting, even today, or as far as yesterday, I've learned something new when I come in a, in a spray booth. There's no painters out there, although I've heard I mean, we hire painters for other facilities and our other facilities that said that, oh, I've been painting for 30 years, there's nothing in the paint business that I don't know. That's the wrong attitude. Because I personally, in my humble opinion, we've learned new things every day in the paint booth. And it got us here today to show the audience out there in the nation and the world that yes, you can paint a vehicle, base coat, clear coat, two stage, including sealer, including the base coat, including a mid coat, and the clear coat, which is this vehicle today. That's a three stage for all the painters out there who's familiar with it. Normally, painters that we hire over the years will take almost half the day to a car like that. And 90%, and I say this because we serve a lot of body shop with our products. I'm also an outside sales, so I, I deal with these uh, products. And painters take about six or seven hours, five hours, four hours, to pay the vehicle, and even that, 90% of collision centers have to cut and buff every vehicle. I'm here to tell you that today, that if you follow our procedures, with what we have here today, we're going to show you, you are, uh, your life's gonna be easier, your painter's life's gonna be easier, your uh, product's gonna be less, time of painting is gonna be cut in half, and the vehicle, believe it or not, will not need, and I repeat, will not need a color sand and buff. These will look perfect, wet with the high solid clear, and 
and our tricks that we learned over the years, we're willing to share with the audience out there. And I hope everyone appreciates that. So uh, uh, let's get going and let's paint this beautiful uh, Honda uh, van. Odyssey, I believe it's a 2012. The vehicle was in worse kind of shape, had a lot of oxidation, had a lot of uh, stress crack and sun crack from the Las Vegas hot sun throughout the roof. So what we did first was machine sand the entire vehicle off, prime it and water sand it, back coat it, make sure it gives you that nice flat surface. But after we do that, this is important and I want to share this with the audience. Having the cleanest food, and we don't have the top $200,000 boot that most shops have. And with that being said, they still cut and buff every car. We don't have that. We have your normal, ordinary, semi-down draft boot. But our boot is so clean as we see. This, first of all, I believe is the best money that you can invest when you have your hose connected to the side. Because that way the painter doesn't have to trip over the hose or kick the hose sometimes. I've seen paint painters do that splash water or dust over the uh, brand new paint or brand new base or clear. So this is detrimental. But I want you to see, this is a pretty old hose. I think we had it for about three months. We cleaned the entire booth where you have zero dust. Even on your, uh, on your, on your uh, spray hose. Our walls are cleaned daily. There's absolutely no dust. Of course, we have a thermometer here to make sure we're spraying at 75 to 80 during the summertime because that's the recommended um, uh, by the factory. Now, the million dollar question is, and I've seen painters make mistakes, make this mistake thousands of times. Well, they're based their vehicle, then they're like, oh, I forgot to bring uh, more paint. Then they open that door, the personnel door. And to my terminology, every time you open, this is a big control environment and it's a big vacuum. Every time you open that door, you risk of bringing outside environment and dust inside. And as a result, you're gonna have a lot of dust sitting on your vehicle. That's why you gotta cut them up. That's one of the reasons. So we keep all our paint here in our cabinets below, so we don't have to run out there. Um, Everything that painters need, I mean everything, from your cups, your hardener, your paper towels, your hammer for closing the lids on your paint, your reducer, your clear, your tape, your wax and grease remover, your towels, extra towels here, your strainers if you need to stock up, uh, your goggles, your respirators, and I want to make a note on the respirator. Please always, for your safety out there, spend the money, get the fresh air respirator. Your life is worth more than a, a job or a paint job because control environment, even though you have some down draft or even a better boot, you still gotta inhale that stuff through regular respirator. I don't care if they have the uh, recycler respirator or the 3M products, that's still going into your system. And that hardener is a killer. So please, if you can, use fresh air respirator. Moving forward, we have our, uh, our mixing sticks, we have our paint, our sealer's already mixed here, ready to go. We have our strainer. This is detrimental to have it in your booth. The light, because obviously when you do a black paint job or some transparent paint job, you want to go through the vehicle after you shoot your base to make sure there's no transparency. Because even though it looks black, or covered inside, it can look transparent outside. So this is a pretty good tool. Uh, moving forward, our guns are clean, our respirator, our trash can, and as you know, if you walk to the booth, everything's clean. There's absolutely zero dust in my hand. That's the detrimental part. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and, um, and start sealing this vehicle first. In my experience serves me that to mix your sealer, I always, even the factory recommends different color. We're doing a three-stage pearl today. I always use a white sealer and put a little bit of red paint in it to get that pinkish look. One, 
uh, you use less paint because pink and red, they're pretty close. You use less paint as a ground coat. And number two, when you mix regular base with your sealer, it, it gives it that nice satin finish and there's no bleed through. So we're gonna go ahead and um, start our process and you're gonna hopefully join us. Obviously this video is gonna be later edited and fast forwarded some parts so we don't bore you to death. But um, our guns are clean and um, our equipment is clean and hopefully the finished product uh, for me and for the audience will be amazing and the customer this particular customer is a repeated customer. He's a former United, United States Air Force Colonel. He's done a service to our country. He doesn't know that we're using a top of the line paint for his car. It's gonna be a surprise as a three stage, but we believe that this is the least we can do for the Colonel. Uh, with that being said, we're going to pour the sealer into our gun. And I always try to not to top my gun, as you see, because the guns have tendency to drip over to the breeder, so we don't do that. Always as a matter of, uh, I guess, habit. I use a little bit of reducer in the end just to make sure that, because Las Vegas, the temperature is so hot, that my material is gonna come out nice and smooth. So we're gonna use a little, Reducer, it looks nice and float, pretty good. It flows it now. It depends what kind of gun you use. We use the Iwata. Iwata has the little breeder on top that's pretty large, and when you do hoods, you have a tendency to drip a little um, paint, which is gonna ruin your entire day. So we normally put a little bit of tape On that, on that breather. Of course, if you leave the tape on there and uh, don't puncture the little hole, it's not going to flow right and it's not going to come out. So we have our, what you see, I poke a little hole in here. So it's not the same hole, it's a little bit, little bit one, but it does the job and you're not going to spill any paint out there. So these little tricks that we've learned over the years, I'm hoping it's gonna help our audience uh, have a better day in the booth, have a nicer product, happier boss, happier customer, and a better career. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and paint this beautiful. I hooked up my pressure respirator. So if you have a hard time hearing me throughout the process, I apologize about that because with the respirator and the goggles and the booth running, it might be a little difficult to uh, hear me, but at least watching it through will help some, some of the folks out there. Just to make sure your goggles are clean. Protection is very important. You protect your eye. You protect your, your lungs by having a uh, fresh air respirator. 
and we're going to go ahead and start the booth. 